Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael, you're watching IDB. And in this video, I have 10 tips and tricks to help you master your iPhone. Let's go ahead, roll the intro and jump right in. So first up is a really cool feature that lets you use your iPhone's camera as a webcam. Apple calls this continuity camera, and I love this feature because it really makes your FaceTime and video calls a lot sharper. The modern webcams in MacBooks and iMacs are not that good, at least when compared to the exceptional quality of the iPhone's camera, so I'll show you how you can turn this on. Inside of settings, you wanna search for continuity camera, and you'll see it right here. And if you turn this on, there really isn't anything else that you have to do. So I'll go home and then on my MacBook with my other hand, I'll open up FaceTime. And then as soon as my MacBook has FaceTime open, you can see my iPhone because it's nearby says connected to Michael's MacBook Air. Now, although you can't see it, I am now seeing on my MacBook's display what this camera sees on my iPhone. So this is really, really handy. And like I said, it is so much better because the quality of these iPhone cameras are infinitely better than the built-in webcams quality. Additionally, a really cool accessory you can get is something like this. This is a, a Belkin mount that I got at the Apple store. Now this simply magnetizes onto the back of your iPhone and now this holds your webcam in place. So I'll have a few of these linked in the description down below. Uh, this one is Belkin, I got this from the Apple store, but there are a bunch of different options that you can buy. Okay, so it's now current day, I'm editing the video, but I quickly want to show you another thing with this continuity camera feature, because it's, it's really cool. So on your Mac, when you're using this, if you click on the green icon on the top right-hand corner, you can turn on center stage. You can see it's on right now. If I turn it off, you can see it gets a bit wider. But when I turn it back on, it's going to follow you. So if I lean back in my chair, you can see that it's now zooming in on me, which is really, really cool. Another really cool thing they call desk view. Now, if you click on desk view, you can see here that it's gonna switch to the ultra wide camera. Now, I'm gonna stand up and aim my camera down a bit towards my desk, and then you can zoom in a bit on your desk like this, and then I'll click on start desk view. And now you can see that it is pretty much like an overhead view of your desk even though your camera is pretty much mounted to your display. This is really, really cool. And if you're ever in like a virtual meeting or something and you need to show a document or something on your desk, you can use this desk view with continuity camera. This is a really, really cool feature uh, built right in. Next up is something that is called speak selection. This allows your iPhone to speak any written text or emojis, which is really cool on your iPhone. So inside settings, simply search for speak selection once again, you'll see it right here. And then if you turn this on, every time you go to select text, you're gonna see a new option that says speak. So I'll select this text right here. And then you can see if I scroll over, we have an option that says speak right here. And if I click on this, you can hear it's gonna come out of the speakers of my iPhone. Testing speak selection. This goes even a step further because it works for emojis. This is where I love this feature because when you go into your iPhone's keyboard, all of these emojis actually have a description, which is kind of cool. So if you take a really obscure emoji like this one, for example, then we'll put this in. If I go ahead and select it, we can actually have our iPhone tell us what this emoji means if we tap on speak. Person with light skin tone with hands clasped above their head making the okay gesture. So you can see that was a pretty complex description, but if I didn't have this feature turned on, I would have no idea what that emoji meant. So this is exclusively what I use this for. I know it is an accessibility feature, but whenever I don't know what an emoji means, I always use speak selection on my iPhone. Next up at number three is something you probably didn't know you could do inside of Apple Notes. So inside of a note, when you are typing, you're gonna see this toolbar at the bottom. And if you don't, just click on this plus icon. Then tap on the icon that looks like a pen. And then at the bottom right, you're gonna see another plus icon. So tap on this. And we have a few different options that most people that use Apple Notes don't even know about. So the first one, which is really darn cool, is you can add a signature. So if you tap on signatures, you can see all the signatures that you have built into your phone. This is my signature. Now you can choose to add one if you want. You can see we can tap on plus, and then it gives us a UI here, and we can sign uh, just like this. I'll tap on done. And then as you can see, we can input this signature right into notes. This is very, very handy if we are marking up or annotating a PDF. 
And then what's also cool is we can add stickers as well. So if I click plus and then click on add sticker, you can see we can add pretty much any sticker built into our iPhone. We can pick up an emoji like this, then we can drop it anywhere on the note. And then also what's really funny is you can actually make these emojis infinitely big, which is something that I don't think you can do anywhere else in iOS. So you can see we can make this emoji as big as possible and we can see some of the details that we can never see in these tiny emojis. Next up is a relatively new feature that I thought a lot of people knew about, but I've been telling my friends and family about this feature and it seems like no one knows about this really cool feature for the phone application. It is called voice isolation. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a call just to let's say Apple so no one answers. And then when you are in a call, if you go into control center, you see we have an option right here that says microphone mode. If I click on this, you can see we can go from standard to voice isolation to wide spectrum. So when you're on a standard phone call, it's gonna be in standard, but if you have a lot of noise around you like a running tap or sirens or street noise, I'd recommend turning it into voice isolation. And then on the other side of this, if you're at like a sporting event, for example, you could turn on wide spectrum and then every single piece of audio is gonna come through on that phone call. So this is a really cool new feature in iOS 17 that lets you change which microphone modes you have when you're on a phone call. Now the next feature I wanna show you lets you access Spotlight Search from anywhere. Now I love using Spotlight Search, however, it seems a bit limited when you can only access it from the home screen, either by swiping down or tapping on search at the bottom. However, there's actually a workaround inside of settings that can allow you to access Spotlight from anywhere in any application on your iPhone. So open up settings, and then you wanna go back and click on accessibility. And then on touch, you wanna to scroll all the way down and choose back tap. Now I have shown back tap before in previous tips and tricks videos, but this specifically is a really cool workaround that lets you access spotlight search from anywhere. So for either a double tap or a triple tap, choose spotlight. Now, if I didn't have this feature turned on from where I am right here in settings, I wouldn't be able to access spotlight. But because I have it set for a triple tap on the back of my iPhone, I'm now able to access Spotlight Search from within an application. This is a really awesome workaround. And the next feature I wanna show you is for AirDrop. So this is related to another feature that Apple came out with called Name Drop, where you're able to hold iPhones against each other to transfer your contact information. But a lot of people don't know that you can actually do this with AirDrops as well. So if you wanna AirDrop something, let's just take a photo for example. When we go into the share sheet and then click on AirDrop, you can see that we have an option down here that says try holding the top of this iPhone near another iPhone. So a lot of people still think that you just have to choose the person in the list of AirDrop devices. But actually when you're in this AirDrop menu, you can actually just hold up your iPhone to another iPhone to initiate that AirDrop, which is something that not a lot of people know about. Next up is a feature called Quick Note. Now I love using Quick Note because it is a fantastic way to quickly jot something down on your iPhone. Now this feature exists on the iPad as a really quick way to write something down with your Apple Pencil if you quickly slide up from the bottom left corner. And Apple has sort of brought this feature over to the iPhone in sort of a different way. So inside of settings, if you open up Control Center, you then wanna make sure you have a Quick Note, not the normal Notes widget added into Control Center. So once you have Quick Note added in here, if you click on it in Control Center, it's gonna allow you to instantly start writing something. And what's really cool about using the Quick Note widget instead of the basic Notes widget is that it doesn't take you out of where you currently are on your iPhone. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll add the normal Notes widget and I also have the Quick Note one right here. We'll go into an application like Weather, for example. Now, if I go to Control Center and I click on the Notes widget, you can see it's gonna jump me over to the Notes application and completely take me out of where I was. However, if I click on the Quick Note widget, you can see it's gonna let me write something down, but it hasn't taken me out of the application I'm in. So I love using Quick Note as a really fast way to jot something down. And next up is for screenshots. So there are two separate screenshot modes that you can take on your iPhone. The first one is a basic screenshot, and the second one is a full page screenshot. And the second version of the full page screenshot is something that not that many people know about. So in Safari, if I go ahead and take a screenshot, you can see if I click on it, we have an option for the normal screen and also full page if I click on this. You can see just how much of the full page it has captured. However, there's also another application that you can do this in. So if I delete this, 
If we go over to the Maps application and take a screenshot, you can see that some of the UI is in the way of the screenshot. However, if we change this from screen to full page, you can now see it has just taken a screenshot of the map and all of the UI inside the application has been removed from this mode. So this is a really cool way to take full page maps screenshots. And next up is something really cool. I don't exactly know how to describe it other than it pretty much lets you turn your iPhone into sort of a Google Pixel. Now you have to make sure that you have the Google application from the App Store. And then once you do, you wanna add this widget to your home screen. This is really cool because recently, Apple has added the option for interactive widgets. Now when you have this widget on your home screen, it's pretty much like I said, having a Google Pixel. You have up to six different touch targets on this widget. So if you click on the Google icon on the far left, this brings you to your Google feed, which I find is infinitely better than something like Apple News. And then if you click in the open space, it's gonna instantly open the keyboard. You can also click on the microphone and get instant access to Google Assistant, which is very, very handy. And then also if you click on this lens icon, it's gonna instantly open the camera and you can search for anything with a photo. And then on top of all those different search options, you have a few trending things as well. So if you click on this, you're able to see what is trending in Google right now. So in my opinion, this solves a pretty big issue for a lot of iPhone users, which was Siri. Now with interactive widgets, you are now just one click away from Google Assistant and also one click away from Google Lens, which is a really powerful feature to have right on the home screen of your iPhone. And then the final feature I wanna show you to help you master your iPhone is for screen recording. Now, as soon as I show you this, this is gonna be one of those features where you're like, oh, that's so cool, I didn't know my iPhone can do that. It seems so obvious, although it is sort of hidden. So a lot of people know that you can record your screen on your iPhone. In Control Center, if you add the screen recording widget and then go into Control Center, you're able to click this and start recording whatever is on your screen. However, if you press and hold on the widget, you can see that we have a few different options. One of these is you can actually broadcast your screen to an application. So you can see we can broadcast our screen to Instagram, we can choose Discord, pretty much any app that supports this, you can broadcast your screen instead of just saving it into photos. Also, you're able to have your microphone turned on when you are recording your screen. This is really, really handy, especially if you are the designated tech support person in your family like I am, and someone in your family needs help using their iPhone. You can simply start a screen recording with the microphone turned on, and then you can walk through that person, whatever it is they need help with. So having the microphone on when doing a screen recording is definitely something that I love using on my iPhone. So that's gonna do it. Hopefully you guys learned something new. And if you did, let me know in the comments below. If you guys found this video informative, helpful, entertaining, anything, please drop a like as it does help us out quite a bit. With all that said, my name is Michael with IDB. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.